everyone. I'm Maryman Kemp, and we're going to talk about the Women's Club of Paducah today. I happen to be a past president, immediate past governor. We serve two-year terms. The international president gets to choose a special project for her two years, and her project this time is empowering women, and I'm the Kentucky chair for that. With us today, we have Jean Elkins, who is the current president of the Women's Club of Paducah, and Wanda Moore, who is a past president. She happened to have been a past president three times. She's the immediate past president, and she's currently the treasurer for the Women's Club of Paducah. Wanda knows a lot about our history, and she's going to talk to us about our very illustrious history. And then Jean will concentrate on what's currently going on with the Women's Club of Paducah. Let's start with Wanda and let her tell us a little bit about the really wonderful history of the Women's Club in Paducah, Kentucky. Starting, how about with the international, with uh, Jenny June. Well, Jenny June was actually Jane Crowley. And Jane Crowley was a journalist in New York City. In 1868, she tried to go to a banquet for Charles Dickens. It happened to be at an all men's club, so she was denied admission. So she thought, well, why should men have be the only ones with organizations? So she and some other ladies started a club they called Cirrhosis. The cirrhosis is actually a Greek word that means a conglomerate and of all kinds of fruit flavors, similar to a pineapple. So when the cirrhosis club was going to be 21 years old, they had over the years learned that there were other women's clubs across the country at that time. So they called a meeting in New York of these groups and 61 clubs sent representatives, and the General Federation of Women's Clubs was formed. They didn't call it the National Women's Club because they intended for it to be worldwide, and there are clubs all over the world in the General Federation of Women's Clubs. Kentucky then has a, the Kentucky Federation of Women's Clubs, and in 1906, the Paducah Club was founded. The energetic ladies immediately started with 35 members and by the first year they had over a hundred. They bought their first clubhouse which was at 7th and Kentucky Avenue. And I think we have a picture maybe of the first clubhouse. And uh, this clubhouse over the years they enlarged this and at the time of the, in the 30s, it had a ballroom, it had an auditorium with 800 seating for 800 people with an orchestra pit, had a meeting room for 200 people, a permanent art collection, and held most of the civic and cultural events of the city of Paducah. Originally, the club was also responsible for the charities in Paducah. We even doled out the coal to the, to the needy people. I'm real proud that in, when the General Federation first formed, the motto was chosen to be unity in diversity. Yes, I really like that too. Um, and the membership, didn't we have to put a the, limit on our membership at one time? The membership grew from 35 to 400, over 400 with a waiting list, so the club decided 400 would be maximum. And, and, then, and then we came upon some hard times. Then the after a debt of $25,000 to do all this building and remodeling I told you about, well, the 37 flood came. And not only did the members lose their clubhouse to the flood, but their own homes. Mm -hmm. So money was scarce and they were unable to pay the bondholders and they lost their clubhouse. Well, um, I wanted to, you to tell us something about the woman who was one of our members, 
But before she married and came to Paducah, she was the international president. Right. We had a woman's club member named Mrs. H.G. Reynolds. Mrs. Reynolds was the state president of Kentucky in the 20s. In the 30s, she became the treasurer of the General Federation of Women's Clubs. And the lady who was the president of the General Federation was a lady named Grace Morrison Poole. Mrs. Poole became friends, of course, with Mrs. Reynolds. And sometime later, Mrs. Reynolds died. And Miss Dr. Reynolds married Mrs. Poole. And Mrs. Poole came to Paducah and became a member of the club very active and of course she was the authority on women's clubs. That's why I had difficulty when I googled them and looked them up on the because there were two Mrs. H. G. Reynolds, Mrs. Yes. Dr. H. G. Reynolds. Well we can be very proud of the things we've accomplished over the years. Wanda would you share some of the our main projects with us? Well one of the, one of the club's uh, projects was to raise $25,000 to start the first mental health clinic. This was done back in the 60s. We also won the big prize in the General Federation with a project to restore and save the Market House. Now, of course, it houses the museum and the art gallery. In the, back in the 20s, the people of Paducah gave coins to build a, to model a beautiful punch bowl and 18 cups a tray a beautiful thing it's very very large it's larger than a this was, punch bowl this we have was now. done for the gunboat Paducah when the gunboat we Paducah here we see a picture of this with a, in a, t a tea that was hosted by the women's club for vice president Albin Barkley and his wife the lady in the picture is mrs. John Kirksey. She was president of the club at that time. You can see this beautiful punch bowl. Well, after the Second World War, the punch bowl, through the Women's Club's efforts, was returned to Paducah and is in our custody. But we have loaned it to the Market House Museum so that everyone can, can see this beautiful punch bowl. Well, I like the case that it's in. Oh, it's, it's in beautiful. a beautiful case. Well, we had some um, other things like the libraries. We've always been a big supporter of libraries and school libraries, too. Thank you, Wanda. Jean, what could a woman expect from the Women's Club of Paducah if she were to join that organization today? Well, we meet once a month. and. Uh, we have six areas that we have programs in. Art, conservation and beautification, education, home life, international affairs, and public affairs. Um, on the, that we meet the first Thursday of the month for where we have our programs. And then the third Thursday of the month is our board meeting. And after that, we have formed a Red Hat Society and we go to lunch. Um, after our board meeting on the third Thursday of the month. Well, tell us a little bit about that uh, fourth area of study, the home life. It's a very, very broad category, and I think sometimes when people hear home life, they think of the classes they had in home ec back in high school, but really, home life covers a lot of territory. Well, um, such things as Habitat for Humanity, Canine Companions for Independence, Economics, Financial Information, uh, Long-Term Care, Car Safety, Health and, and health, uh, Healthy Lifestyles, Organ Donation, and I could go on and on. Uh, it's a very broad category. Um, tell us about one of your favorites and my favorites. Uh, I know it's your, your favorite, the ESO. Well, um, ESO is a book discussion group, and we choose a book, and everybody reads it. And then um, we usually have a meal that's associated with the book in which we discuss the book. Uh, for instance, we read Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, and we had a 
uh, a Savannah dinner with uh, uh, a seafood uh, boil, and uh, we read Bill Cunningham's book, and we went up and and uh, rode on the hay wagons to see the night riders, and that was interesting. Uh, yeah, that's an outdoor drama it's somewhere an outdoor around drama Katie's. At, at Cobb, Kentucky. Cobb. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure where Cobb is. But. It's down from Princeton. Uh -huh. It's in the middle of nowhere, which is where the Knight Riders would want to be, I uh -huh. think. Um, anyway, we uh, ESO is a very popular part of the Women's Club. Uh, one time, uh, sometimes we have someone else come in and talk to us about a book. Sometimes we can get a local author, and sometimes the women in the club handle it among ourselves, don't we? I think that that's one of the the groups that has more fun than any of the others in the in the club. Uh, now, Jean, we want to know about the big art show. There's lots to tell about the art show. Well, this is our biggest community project. And in the spring, it will be our 72nd, which, of course, none of us have been to all of them. <laughs> uh, we have uh, usually around 250 paintings, art pieces that are uh, broad, and uh, from student artists and from adult, both uh, professional and uh, Non-professional. Non <laughs> and yes, we, we usually give uh, somewhere around $2,500 in awards. And it runs uh, for two weeks at City Hall. It's free to everyone uh, that wants to come and, and, and view it. Um, it usually runs uh, concurrently with the quilt show. They have asked us to have it at that time. Um, I think a long time ago we timed it um, with the Dogwood Trail, and now we have the Dogwood Trail and the Quilt Show and the Art Show all well, the around Dogwood the same Trail time. The Dogwood Trail is a moving target. Yes, it <laughs> the is. The Quilt Show is planned years in, <laughs> in advance. advance. So it was easier to plan it, and so we, we started the Saturday before the Quilt Show and run it for two weeks so that it's there for people who come for the quilt show, we advertise in their brochure and they can come and see the wonderful art. And Jean, I was going to tell you that we just changed that from amateur to non-professional because the, those artists didn't like being called amateur Amateurs. artists. Okay. They're, and we let the artists decide if they're amateur, which we now call non-professional, or professional artist. We, the winner of our show gets a $500 prize. The last two years, it's been a professional artist. Yes. But the year before, it was a non-professional. And did you tell us about the children in the art show? We, we have a lot of children I who enter the I mentioned that we had show. students. We do yes, have a lot. Yes, stu students is uh, what I should we call them. Had, children as young as one year old. And we have some very special artists too that uh, enter the art show. The, these are children who are uh, developmentally challenged or challenged in some fashion. Um, we have done, we, well Jerry Watson for instance, he's a, prof I would consider him a professional and he credits the Women's Club of Paducah with getting him started and giving him enough confidence to go on, and he has gone very far with his artwork. Well, some people might not know that the Papa Group, the mm -hmm. Paducah Area Painters Alliance, was actually started from members, people who came to enter our art show. Uh, Mr. Clyde Lauder, a professional painter in Paducah, was interested in starting another art uh, s group and uh, he passed out flyers about this meeting and uh, most all of those people in the Papa group 
do participate in our in our art show. They're very supportive of it. Well, we've been very lucky uh, with Paducah's Artist Relocation Program to have some most interesting uh, entries from from those artists. But the the Papa artists have always done, I think, beautiful, beautiful work, and I enjoy their paintings as well. If there's anyone watching the show today who has not made an effort to come to the art show each spring, we, we have it for those two weeks. If you don't want to come downtown while the quilt show is going on because of the uh, more crowding and, and harder to find a parking place and harder to get into a restaurant, things like that. We do have it for the two weeks and I would urge you to come down there. You will be amazed. They allow us to put this on at City Hall and we have artwork downstairs and upstairs. And there's an elevator. If you don't want to walk up the stairs, you can take the elevator. And Merriman, we always, of course, are looking for more artists. Yes. So we try to send out letters about our art show to artists who have participated in the past. But if there's anyone who hasn't participated, we certainly would encourage them to come. And over the years, I've watched some of the artists, local artists. You know, we had a really fine art colony, you might say, or a group mm -hmm. of artists here before the artist came. That's, that's true. From, from out of town to the artist relocation. And some of our young artists, we've had some very fine, we give a scholarship to the, the winner of the student competition. And we have, we well, can our, be very uh, proud the, of that. The entries are from artists from not just from Paducah and McCracken County, they're from Tennessee and Missouri and uh, Illinois and Indiana. Kentucky and mm -hmm. yeah. I mean it, it, it uh, compromises a wide a range from where It we does. We draw from a very large area. Um, Jean, I've heard, well or Wanda, either one on this one, I've heard rumors about a memorial garden connected with the Women's Club? Well, it's not a rumor. The Memorial Garden is finished. Um, almost finished. Almost finished. Got some growing to do, I it'll bet. Be, it'll be really pretty in the spring. Yeah. And um, it's available for rent for outdoor events. Uh, of course, now's not a very good time, but when the weather's better, um, receptions or weddings or whatever, we do have that for rent. Well, Jean has mentioned that we rent our facility, we rent our clubhouse, and we try to keep the rental fee minimum so that where you might go somewhere and pay $1,700, we charge $250 for a wedding and reception, $75 for showers. So we try to keep our prices low enough, and we don't have a huge facility. Probably between 50 and 75 was very comfortable if it's a come and stay type event. Something that we hosted a reception recently for the Barkers, who most people in McCracken County know, and uh, 300 people signed the guest register. So uh, it's a beautiful place if, if anyone needs it some place to have a wedding or a dinner or a reception and right now we just today finished and it will be beautiful during the Christmas Holidays. season. Well we do that each year and then when the season is over we put it back to the way it was that is uh, conducive to any any and kind of gathering that you want to have there. I, I really think we have a picture of our clubhouse that we now own. In 1956, we bought this building. It's a 1928 home that's on Jefferson Street. It was originally the home of Walter Jaton. Walter Jaton's wife inherited this home, I was told, and uh, they lived there. It was later sold to the Illinois Central Hospital, which is right next door. It's at 1406 Jefferson. Yeah, that Illinois Central Hospital, some people now may know it as the Ketterjohn Building. The Ketterjohn Building. 
Upstairs, we have five bedrooms and two baths and a kitchen. Uh, downstairs, we have meet, a large meeting room that's L-shaped with a full kitchen. And uh, looks a little bit different from this. We don't have to, we have different landscaping, but it's a beautiful building that's been well preserved by the ladies over the years. Yes, and that land, new landscaping just uh, with the Memorial Garden. But I can really recommend it. I liked it so well. I had a wedding reception there back in 1967, and then I had another one there just recently. <laughs> but it, it's a, uh, and well, there's a stairway for the, for people to walk down. It makes beautiful pictures with that stairway. We have a mantle on one end of the living room. So it's a lovely place, place for pictures, and we think that it's another service to the community to have this beautiful place. And Merriman, we don't want people to think that we have a membership of 400 now. True. The Woman's Club is like Kiwanis and Rotary and the Lions Club and everything else. Uh, we're declining in membership. We would love to have anyone who's interested in being in a group that we have interesting programs, we have a wonderful fellowship, and... Um, and you don't have to come to all the meetings. No. If there's some particular area of study that just leaves you cold, you do not have to, you certainly don't have to feel as though you have to attend, but we'd love to have you come, and uh, you can call Jean, our president, at 554-8087. Or you may call Wanda, the treasurer, at 898-3710. Uh, That's right. Or um, you may call me at 442-7636. But we would love to have you come and visit with us. Um, come to one of our special occasions. We have special occasions uh, throughout the year where we'll do a little bit extra. Or come to the book club and we will, we will explain a little bit more about Women's Club and we would love to have you as a member. We do a lot of good in the community, but we have fun among ourselves too. So we have a long history, as you've just heard, a uh, hundred years in this community. And we have produced a lot of Wonder Women in Paducah over the years, and we'd like for you to join us and become one of those wonder women of the Women's Club of Paducah. Some of our past presidents have uh, been very, very, very interesting women, and we're losing them over the years, but uh, Golda Beeman who is one of our past presidents. A lot of people in Paducah know Golda Beeman, and I know that Wanda can tell us many tales involving Golda. Pauline Green is another uh, one of our past presidents who is still uh, in Paducah and still- Martha Barker. Martha Barker, who you mentioned her 60th wedding anniversary, I believe, I believe it was not long ago. And- uh, Lou Esther Manchester. Uh, well, uh, she's no longer with she's us. She's no longer here, but. But we, is she, a lot, uh, I guess a, an awful lot of people knew Lou Esther. But um, we, uh, we would like to increase our membership. We'd like to have some younger women come. We do have, uh, Wanda's one of our younger women. But uh, uh, we have a school teacher who is uh, uh, much younger than we are and has very young children. But um, most of the communities have a junior women's club, or some of the communities have a junior women's club, which is sort of a feeder organization for the women's club. But we no longer have that, and they've changed the age limits. Uh, but whatever your age, we would encourage you to contact us or just show up. We meet on the first and first Thursday is our regular meeting at, when we have our program at 1.30. And then the third is in the morning. At 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock. 
But the ones that a visitor would be most interested in would be the first uh, Thursday of each month. Right. And uh, unless they like to go eat and go to the, come to the Red Hat luncheon. Yes, and we we get through we then by by ten by eleven thirty, mm -hmm. and then go on to uh, to we don't go to the same place every time. No, and you don't have to wear a red hat, do you? If you no, don't want you to, don't. and you don't have to wear purple. But but you can. But, but you can if you want to. But right. we're still a red hat group, and we've got plenty of red hats. We had a member. Mary Stevens, who always wore hats, and she, uh, she her husband, allowed I, us to her when he became a widower, allowed us to have her hats. I, I think we should also tell that we do have a male member. Oh, in that's the Women's right. Club of Paducah, uh, Charles Stevens. You mentioned his wife Mary. She was a devoted member of the Women's Club, and Charles, when he retired from West Vico, would come and help her with fundraisers that we had, lunches. She was our very mm -hmm. best cook. And uh, when she died, January a year ago, I told him, I said, well, Charles, you have to take her place. So we made him an honorary member, and then he asked me over the summer, he said, do you think anyone would be upset if I paid dues? And I said, I certainly don't think so. So we do have a male member and we're looking in the for Women's more. Club of Paducah, and we really? will take more. See, the women have joined the men's organizations right. because the men found out that the women would do the work. <laughs> well, we will be glad to take the men in our organization. Charles belongs to ESO, too, doesn't he? Jane? Yes, he does. He is currently our chairman. Uh, our book, book book club reading club uh, the women's club of Paducah. Well, I can't wait to find out who's going to be the second male member of our organization. I'm sorry, but my husband has already said it won't be him. That when I'm gone, that the women's club won't see him. He gets the job of moving the easels, taking the Christmas tree out of the basement, mowing the putting yard. it together, mowing the yard putting the Christmas tree back in the basement. And uh, he's, he's real good to help me do everything, but I'm sorry, ladies, but when I'm gone, he will be too. Well, we just consider him a member, even if he hasn't paid his dues, we don't know what we'd do without him. He, we appreciate all the help that we can get, and every once in a while we need somebody to carry those heavy easels. We have a lot of easels because of our popular art show. Well, we thank you for being with us today, and we invite you again to give us a call if you're interested in the Women's Club, and we will show you how easy it is to become a member. Thank you so much.